we're asked to determine whether the integral is convergent or divergent. And this type of integral happens to be what we call an improper integral. Now, how do we know it's improper? Well, if we look carefully, we can see that one of the bounds, in particular the upper bound, if we were to plug it into the original function, would give us an undefined result because we would have 40 divided by the square root of three minus three, which is indeed equal to 40 over zero. This is undefined. So what's problematic here is that one of the bounds leads to a discontinuity. And whenever your graph has a discontinuity, you have to evaluate the integral in a very special manner. And all we need to do is replace the three with a variable. We typically use the variable t. And this will work so long as we take the limit as t approaches three. Now, a little more specifically, if you consider the bounds here, we're integrating from a lower bound of two to an upper bound of three, and it was the three that was problematic. Ask yourself, from which side of three would we be approaching in this case? Well, we're integrating from two towards three. So if you think of it that way, then you can see clearly that we actually are approaching three as we integrate from the left side of three. So you're going to put a little minus sign here to indicate that you're approaching from the left side. And then we have the lower bound of two, and then we have 40 over the square root of three minus x with respect to x. So with that little adjustment, we can go ahead and begin to analyze this integral. Now, what we next typically do is try to evaluate the integral without the bounds and then later put the bounds back on. So basically, you're going to be taking somewhat of an aside here. And with this aside, you're going to be trying to integrate. So you have 40 over, let's rewrite the square root of three minus x as three minus x raised to the power of one half. It's going to make the integration a little bit easier. Furthermore, well, I was thinking about bringing this to the numerator, but in fact, why don't we just try a u substitution? So we'll just let u equal the inside function here, so the three minus x. We'll differentiate, so du equals, the derivative of three is zero, the derivative of minus x is just minus one. This is with respect to x. So we basically have du is equal to negative dx. I find it helpful to solve for dx, so divide both sides by negative one, and you'll see that negative du is equal to positive dx. So now we rewrite the integral. We have the integral of 40 over, now the three minus x will be substituted, of course, with u. So you have u to the power of one half. The dx is going to be substituted with negative du. So for that, you could put the du here. You can put the negative sign in front of that constant right there. In fact, let's tweak it a little further. We'll factor out the constant. So you have negative 40 integral. Notice when you factor out the negative 40, you still have a placeholder of one right there. So that's looking a little bit nicer. Now we can move that u to the half to the numerator. And when you move it to the numerator, it becomes u to the negative one half. Okay, finally, we can integrate. So we add one to the exponent that gives us u to the positive half. Then we multiply by the reciprocal. So you're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one over two is just two over one. Don't forget about the negative 40 right there. So when you multiply that, you're going to get negative 80 times the square root of u. We go back, we recall that u was three minus x. So we'll put that back in. We now have negative 80 times the square root of three minus x. Now we can reattach the limits. Let's recall that the lower limit was two and the upper limit was t. And this was fine so long again as we let the, or take the limit as t approaches three from the left-hand side of three. So now we'll plug in the upper bound first. So we'll have negative 80 square root of three minus t minus negative 80. Well, minus negative 80 is just plus 80 square root of three minus two. Don't forget you still are doing the limit as t approaches three from the left. So at this point, you can basically plug three in for t and see what happens. So you'll have negative 80 times the square root of three minus three plus 80 times the square root of one. Well, this is nice because three minus three is zero and zero times negative 80 is zero. So this actually disappears, it goes to zero. We're left with 80 times the square root of one, which of course is just 80. Now, because we obtained a finite result, we can conclude that the original integral was a convergent integral. So even though it had that discontinuity in it, we still obtain a finite result, which is a little bit strange perhaps, but the answer indeed is that it is convergent.